Welcome to another Petty Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Petty. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Olympics um, and the and particularly the heat stress at the Olympics. I don't know if you've noticed, but it was very warm over there, and it seemed like a lot of the athletes were dropping like flies. So I was curious to see, from an industrial hygiene standpoint, what the level of um, heat stress was for those Olympians. Here's some photographs of conditions on field uh, 36 to 40 C. 40 C, by the way, is 104 degrees. So the air temperatures during the Olympics, looking at the weather data, were somewhere between 87 and 95 F, and the relative humidities were around 66 to 84 percent. So it was both hot and humid. Now the interesting thing is that... um, uh, even the water temperatures in the bay were up to 86 degrees, and they were polluted. Now, the USA swimming limits for temperatures in long-distance races for swimming is 85 degrees. Uh, the World Aquatic Governing Body does allow for a little bit higher. So what was interesting about these uh, long swimming events is the in the bay, the venue pumped deep, colder water to the surface, And then they surrounded these uh, swimming venues with very fine mesh nets to try to keep the pollution, including E. coli, away from the swimmers, something I bet you didn't know. So the concept of heat stress and heat stroke, this is an industrial hygiene uh, concept, but it's rather straightforward, and that is that um, your body is, especially when it works, is generating heat through the uh, metabolism process or metabolic process, and it has to get rid of that heat. And if it's not able to get rid of the heat at the same rate it's generating it, the body temperature increases. And when that happens and it gets beyond a certain point, um, you can have significant health effects. It starts with very profuse sweating, dizziness, then all of a sudden you don't sweat, and then eventually you get a heat rash, and then you can collapse. We call that heat stroke. So it's a very dangerous phenomenon. So I was curious when I was looking at this, what were the heat stress levels? Because they can, by using temperature and humidity, one can um, estimate what the levels are and compare those to what would be allowed. And this is a chart that um, is a little busy, but it's pretty straightforward in the sense that it across... um, the bottom is uh, the relative humidity. You can see the numbers on the top, anywhere from 40 to 100 percent. And on the right is temperature from 80 to 110. And the, the blocks or cells in the red are um, heat indexes over 126 Fahrenheit. And it's extreme danger, high risk of heat stroke. And the conditions in yellow are in the dangerous zone, heat stroke possible, heat related illness likely. And you keep marching on down. Um, Blue is extreme caution, and then uh, green is just caution. So you certainly want to stay out of those red and yellow zones. That would not be good. So what were the conditions there at the Olympics? If you um, look at that range of humidities that I put up earlier, the 66 to 84% range, and temperatures... uh, from the um, high 80s up to as high as 104. You can put a box in place, and that's indicated by this uh, white rectangle, if you will. And you'll note that with mo- with few exceptions, that the conditions for the athletes in terms of heat stress or heat stroke were in the almost always danger to extreme danger range. So it's no surprise that they were... Uh, having difficulties. Now this is for conditions in the air. I took some liberties and looked at the um, temperature of the water, 86 degrees, and assumed 100% humidity because they're surrounded by water. And you'll see that little white box to the right. Even there, and you can see why the governing bodies don't want you swimming in 86 degree um, water, 
They're in the danger zone where heat stroke's possible and heat-related illness is likely. So that's why they were pumping cold water from the lower levels up to the upper levels in the bay. So the conclusions. The air temperatures at the Olympics ranged from 87 to 104, as far as I could find. The relative humidity levels were 66 to 84. And in general, the athletes were in the danger to extreme danger categories. If you use the swimmer data, as I suggested before, they're in the danger category as well. And while the Olympic athletes clearly are in great shape, they exert a lot more energy and give off more heat than traditional workers where these charts are made. So these charts would not be conservative for athletes. Um, there's another index called the Universal uh, Thermal Climate Index. And looking at this same range, you can see in terms of temperatures and humidities, the values uh, provided in this alternate method for heat stress were from strong heat stress to extreme heat stress. So again, using two different in methods, the athletes are in very high street heat stress mode um, while they were performing. And here's some pictures from the Olympics, and it's no wonder we saw pictures like this where people are uh, really, really overheated. I thought you would get a kick out of uh, looking at the Olympics from a standpoint of why uh, the athletes were having such a hard time with the temperatures, and it's from an industrial hygiene standpoint because they were in danger to extreme danger ranges most of the time from a heat stress standpoint. Hope you enjoyed this uh, technical explanation as to what was going on with our athletes in the Olympics. As always, feel free to call us uh, or write us at the address listed below. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Please watch for our next podcast. Have a great day.